the typical fast start this big wide long stretch of playing field to enable the runners to get away to a start without any chance of falling already that leading group forging the pace and we'll see after about 500 meters this field will be strung out so fierce is the pace by the leading runners and again so typically the leading five runners all from Kenya 148 runners in this men's short race and very quickly the field begins to stretch up the runners in front as they go through the muddy portion of the course much like a horse race where the leading horse doesn't have that mud being thrown back in his face and over his body and since this is the same course and these conditions continue to be wet we'll find the mud gets more and more glutinous as one race follows another and as one lap follows another but there we are with the leading group all from Kenya tremendous pace stretching out this field merciless forging ahead trying to pack their four runners ideally one two three four to take the team title but this is a fast pace they go up this little hillock and they'll find the mud getting worse and worse as each lap follows the previous one. Like the women's race, there are six members to a team and the six Kenyans are leading the way at the moment. That would be the perfect score, of course. Maybe it's too much to expect them to do that, but they're looking extremely confident. Wonderful running machines, a tremendous tradition of cross country in Kenya. It's perhaps the most important international race of all for them. That's why they had their three week training camp. And look at this field, the way it's stretched out after less than a mile. Leading the way from Kenya, competitor 145, Stephen Raramoy. And beside him is Benjamin Limo. But the Kenyans are continuing to front run this race. All six very much in contention. 146 from Kenya, John Kosgai, who is the Commonwealth steeplechase champion. He won the team gold medal and was fifth in the individual 98 World Cross Country Championship short course, so he's very familiar with this situation. There are Canadians in this field as well. Sean Cayley, Joel Bourgeois, Kevin Sullivan, Jeff Schiebler, Jeremy Deere, and Richard Trayman. And the mention of Kevin Sullivan brings up the point of the short race. Kevin Sullivan, of course, that we well know on the track is a fine 1500 meters runner. And this short race is designed in some respects to look after the bottom end of the register of distance running, the 1500 meter runners, the 3000 meter runners, perhaps the 5000 meter runners. Whereas the top end is the 12 kilometer course for the longer distance runners, the 5000 and 10,000 and half marathon runners. We'll be back after this. Ethiopian runners leading the way in this men's short course World Cross Country Championship event. Jeff Schiebler at the moment is the leading Canadian. Schiebler, who trains in Japan, had a victory in the World Cross Challenge race in Japan earlier this year. But he is being hard pressed to uh, maintain the pace that the Kenyan and Ethiopian runners have established in this short course event in Belfast. Lassini of Morocco wearing number 165 up with this leading group of Kenyans and Ethiopians. Two Kenyans, two Ethiopians, two Kenyans, and then Lassini of Morocco, who was the 1997 World 5000 meter finalist and was 12th in the World Cross Country Championships in 97. So he's got good experience there. We see him on the left of the picture. France are packing quite well. Two blue clad figures behind the Kenyans and Ethiopians. And then another Kenyan and then two more Moroccans. And this is a tough climb. You can see them squelching in the mud as they work hard to ascend this hill. Paul Kosgai has now taken over the lead. He was the world junior steeplechase record holder. Bronze medalist in 1997 the world junior and the 1998 world short course cross country champion as a result of this very fast pace the field is well strung out now but still at the front 
the Northeast Africans, Kenyans and Ethiopians. Tremendous tradition which they're upholding magnificently. In contrast to some of the other courses that we have seen at the World Cross Country Championships, this one is run entirely on grass, although some of the competitors might argue there isn't much grass left in some <laughs> portions of the course. Likely that from this leading group of 12 or 15, the eventual medalists will come in the individual competition. And then, of course, in the team competition, it's how well that team can pack. Kenya, for example, at the moment, one, two, that's three points. Ethiopia, third place, that's three points. And it's the four out of the six that count towards the team competition. So packing your runners and even making the fifth and sixth runners score well is very important. This event is only in its second year on the World Cross Country calendar. It was introduced in Marrakesh, and Paul Kosgai, competitor number 150, running alongside Benjamin Limo, finished in third place. In third place in this year's race is Milion Waldi of Ethiopia, and Jeff, among his claims to fame, he helped pace Haley Gebrselassie's world record in Hengelo and Helsinki last year. Yes, he's also a reigning world junior 5,000 and cross country champion. So he's very well equipped to do this job and he's lying a comfortable third at the moment with another Ethiopian number 72 in fourth place. Halu Mekunen is running in fourth position. And then two Kenyans, competitors 147, James Koski and Daniel Gachara. Feel very well strung out indeed as a result of the very fast pace forged by the leaders. Benjamin Limo, number 148, was fifth in this race in 1998. He's an army engineer in Kenya. He showed very, very good form in the Kenyan training camp and therefore his coaches will be not at all surprised with the fact that he's taking the lead and looking very strong indeed. He trained in heavy conditions in Great Britain in preparation for this race and so is well capable of handling the demands of this course. Well, there is an opportunity for this Army engineer to uh, perhaps more than double his salary if he can get to the finish line in first place and claim the $40,000 prize that goes to the winner along with the gold medal. It's a two-man race, strictly a two-man race. You see Paul Kosgai in second place, glancing back to see if anybody is going to threaten him. It would almost appear as though he has given up any hope of trying to catch Limo, and Limo is going to be there as the gold medalist in 1999. It is Kosgai finishing second. Mekinen has raced up to be third, moving ahead of Walde, who comes in fourth, and Koski is the fifth place finisher Gachara of Kenya, and then we have Abdella Bahar of France moving in in seventh place. But the winner, Benjamin Limo, running alongside his teammate Paul Kosgai for a good portion of the race, about 400 meters from the finish line, turned it on and wound up with a three second advantage as he crossed the line to claim the gold medal. So it is Kenya 1-2, Ethiopia 3-4, and fifth consecutive world championship. The yellow portion of the course, the extra 400 meters that the men will run in extending their race to five laps and 12,000 meters. Best wishes extended to Paul Turgat as he attempts an unprecedented fifth straight title. Domination of this event by runners from Kenya basically since 1986 when John Ngugi began a string of four championships. And apart from the uh, double victory by Moroccan Khalid Ska, he's the only non-Kenyan to win since Ngugo started his string in 86. Typical fast start that we've seen throughout these races. But in fact, just to give you some idea of the potential of these athletes, in order to go into the first 20 or 25 runners at this pace and then sustain a very fine world-class quality performance, an athlete needs to have four-minute mile potential. In other words, he's got to be capable of running around four minutes for a mile 
and he's got to then be able to withstand that fast start and settle down for the rest of this demanding 12,000 meter course. The fast pace at the lead of the lead group very quickly strings out this field, but this man in the lead at the moment is going at a suicidal pace and doubtless will be devoured by the rest of the pack very shortly. The runner from Lesotho has really moved into a, a very fast early pace, but I doubt if he will be able to sustain it. As a matter of fact, uh, he has now been uh, replaced by a Kenyan, and it is Chalanga of Kenya who has moved to the front. And very quickly, other members of this large field move past the man who established the early pace, the runner from Lesotho. But it is Joshua Chalanga of Kenya, a 26-year-old who is leading the way in the men's long race coming an increasingly severe problem for these cross-country runners as the rain continues to fall. And you see the difficulty they are now having as the downhill side hill slope is chopped up even more and becomes much more difficult to navigate. Yes, that corner falls away, which makes it very difficult. And when the surface is very slippery indeed, it will take more and more difficult negotiations in the succeeding laps. Moroccans well represented up front. Kenyans and Ethiopians inevitably well represented up front. And then a host of other nations as this field sets off in pursuit of the leading 20. And very early in the race, as we approach the four minute mark, the field really spread out. And the Kenyans, as we are so accustomed to seeing, running as a group, leading the way. This Kenyan team, Don, is remarkably strong. If they win here today, as seems likely looking at this start, it will be their 14th consecutive team victory. This is quite an incredible performance. The white vested figure is John Brown of Great Britain. He's the top male British distance runner, the 1996 European cross country champion, and the Great Britain 10K record holder. He's in very, very elevated company here, and he's doing very well to stay with this leading group. He may pay a price for this later in the race, of course. That remains to be seen. But the Kenyans, familiar with setting a fast pace, familiar with the demands of this course, and, of course, striving to win their 14th consecutive team title. Kenya, 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 Kenya. That's not a bad way to start. If they were to score, that would be 10 points, and nobody could get close. Mohamed Moorhead of Belgium is up with the leading group of Kenyans as they continue to dominate. And Paul Turgat is attempting to win an unprecedented fifth consecutive title. Now, I mentioned John Ngugi earlier. He started this Kenyan domination with four straight from 1986 through 1989. And he has also won five, but not consecutively. His other victory in 1992. And then Khaled Ska of Morocco won in 90 and 91. But the Kenyans took over in 92. And uh, Paul Turgat emerged as the champion in 95 in Durham, England, in 96 in Cape Town, in 97 in Turin, Italy, in 98 in Marrakesh. And he's trying for five in a row here in Belfast. And the finest athletes in the world, the finest distance runners in the world, are being strung out into a very, very long line as a result of this fast pace of the Kenya. 713 in green there. Paul Goera of Portugal up in that leading group. Again, the challenge is, can he stay with that leading group as we approach the end of 12,000 meters? The spectators striving to stay up with this leading group for just a, a few meters but they are having difficulty in running with the leader, Chalanga of Kenya. He has now moved into the lead. Chalanga had been leading for a good portion of this race in the early stages, and now number 670, Paul Turgat, the defending champion, is running in second place. 
Guerrera of Portugal is trying to stay with the Kenyans. He seems to be working a lot harder, though, Jeff, than do the two Kenyans who are leading the way, Ivuti and Turgat. Yes, and we'll remember in years past, Haile Gebre Selassie, who I rated as the best distance runner I've ever seen, tried his hand at cross-country running, but was inevitably overwhelmed by the Kenyan packing around him. So after three attempts, he gave up. They are relentless in their tenacity, their ability to apparently sustain all sorts of difficulties, and their ability and willingness to run as a team and to pack. So Guerra has a very, very difficult task on his hands trying to make inroads into these Kenyans, but he's running very well and looking confident and strong. We have heard so much over the years, Jeff, about running being a way of life for the Kenyans. Well, it certainly is. Many of them run considerable distances to school when they're young children. They live at altitude, of course. They have a fairly simple diet. In this man's case, 670, Paul Turgot trying to win his fifth consecutive race. When he's training intensively, he trains three times a day. When he's training less intensively, he trains only twice a day. But he's a magnificent athlete who works very hard for his successes and takes enormous pride in the outstanding achievements of the, of the Kenyan distance runners. Well, they have certainly dominated since 1986, and there's some difficulty in negotiating the slippery slope. That's the worst part of the course, the most difficult part of the course, because the hill falls away to the right and is very, very muddy on the inside, so they have to try to go to drier ground, and that increases the angle of the fall away. Now they have to work hard in this climb uphill, and here we see Guerra working extremely hard to negotiate this muddy hill. Coming down the bend, you saw Ibuti slip to the outside of the course, and that enabled Turgat running on the inside and maintaining his balance and perhaps finding some firmer footing to go to the front. And Turgat now has control of the race. They're approaching the halfway point of this race, and Turgat is opening up a rather substantial lead now over Ibuti. Might this be a little too early to make a break? This is where decisions have to be made. This is where thoughts are going on in the heads of these athletes. In Turgat's case, sensing a fifth consecutive victory. Do I continue to press hard now? Or do I harbor my resources and let them challenge me by trying to sustain as even a pace as possible, which physiologically is the soundest thing to do? And in Ivuti's case, how long do I wait before I try to catch up to Paul Turgat? recognizing the quality of runner he's following. There's a good 40 meters distance between the three Kenyans at the moment. Turgat leading, Ivuti second, Guerra of Portugal in fourth place, doing very well to stay in this elevated company. And Chalanga, another Kenyan who set the pace in the early stages, is running back in fifth position. It appears as though Chalanga, along with Ivuti, is having more difficulty in maneuvering through the slop on the side hill slopes than is the leader, Turgat. Turgat, as you pointed out earlier, along with some of his teammates, Jeff, spent a fair bit of time training under these muddy, cool conditions. Turgat gave up many lucrative offers in, to run in Europe in order to attend the three-week-long Kenyan training camp where they had some heavy rains and therefore some muddy conditions. And doubtless he's pleased he did this when we see the conditions under which they're running today. Guerra doing very well indeed, still staying uh, there or thereabouts in this leading group of five. Turgat looking for an historic fifth consecutive title. Described this course for the 27th IAAF World Cross Country Championships as the toughest he has ever seen. And there you saw him splashing through the mud very hard work indeed, particularly when the mu murder companies and ascent. But these men train for these conditions. They do a lot of hill running in Kenya. And while it's not muddy all the time, they've had sufficient experience in Europe to know what it's like to run in all sorts of weather. Some idea of the pace can be gained by the spectators. Their moment of glory, they can say, I ran beside <laughs> Paul Turgat once. They needn't say how far and they needn't say when. Turgat made his break coming down the slope when Avuti had some difficulty and slipped to the outside of the course. 
And it appears as though Turgat is slowly but surely increasing his lead with every step. They're at the point in the race where they may soon be lapping runners. Turgat is now looking back to see whether or not Ivuti has made any inroads to the lead he has established. I think Ivuti is challenging him, Don. I think Ivuti is getting very, very slowly closer to Turgat. There's Guerra in fourth place. Kenya five. No question about the team competition at the moment. Absolutely dominating by Kenya. Wonderful running as a team. And Turgat, the leader, going for his fifth consecutive championship. Look at the beautiful running action of this magnificent distance runner. These fine distance runners make it look almost effortless. It's beautiful to watch. Evans Rutu of Kenya making some inroads back in the pack, and there we see Mohamed Moorhead of Belgium. Born in Morocco, Don, then moved to Belgium, so Belgium are, are quite happy to avail themselves of his services. John Brown of Great Britain is there. Jafar of Ethiopia is also in contention, but there's a sizable gap between the runners back in 6th, 7th, and 8th positions and the leading Kenyans. But Ivutu definitely catching Turgat. He's made a remarkable recovery. He maybe ran through a bad patch at one stage of the race. Now he's feeling better again. He has this determination and this focus. He keeps his head down. He tries to blank off everything around him. And now he's right on the heels of the defending champion. At one point, I suggested that it appeared as though the defending champion was increasing his lead with every stride, but he began glancing back, and he saw Avuti beginning to close on him. And now it is going to be a battle for the goal. Bank Athletics World Cross Country Championship coverage coming to you from Belfast. The final event and the last lap of the men's long race. And Avuti has moved ahead of the defending champion, Paul Turgat. Guerra of Portugal has moved into third place, but runners are now being lapped on this final lap of this 12,000 meter race. And the pace of the last K was 3.14. That's a very good pace. It's a good pace, and particularly so at this late stage in the race and with the dreadful underfoot conditions that we're witnessing. So Avuti, who may have gone through a bad spell as he uh, slipped coming down one of the downhill, side hill portions of the course, made up a rather large gap on the defending champion and has now moved into the lead. Of course, what we don't know, Don, is how each of these athletes is feeling. Is Turgot saying, I'll stay behind Avuti, there's nobody else close? So I'll stay behind him and surge close to the finish. Is Ivuti saying, I feel quite strong, I'll have an even paced uh, segment and then push very hard with two or three hundred meters to go. We're not privy to these thoughts and these feelings, but we know they're very fit and we know they're very experienced also, particularly Turgat with four wins under his belt. And Turgat also has Olympic and World Championship 10,000 meter silver medals. And for a brief time in 1997, he was the world 10,000 meter record holder. Now you see Avuti going wide again, and Turgat is running on what appears to be somewhat better footing as he goes very close to the barrier. And now Turgat seems to be making a move, and uh, Avuti has trouble on that side hill slope once again. Guerra chooses the left-hand side of the picture as we look at it and seems to negotiate that hill very well, still in third place. Uh, you were talking about Turgat's qualifications. He's also got the world best performance in the half marathon, so he's got loads of endurance as well as a crisp amount of speed. Ivuti still leading, however, and the defending champion in fourth place. Is it a cat and mouse game? Can they afford to ignore Guerra? Two meters separating these two outstanding cross-country runners. And as they lap other runners, I'm sure thoughts must be going through those lap runners. How can they run so easily, so comfortably, and I'm struggling. 
Ibuti seems to be increasing the lead slightly. No Turgut moves alongside up this testing hill. This demands character as well as athletic ability. Huge physiological capacity, great oxygen uptake capabilities. Ibuti, quick glance to the side to say, how are you doing, Paul? Are you feeling like me? Can I try to stretch that lead a little? Turgut, as if attached by a magnet, follows his every move, making difficult, different and difficult decisions in the way to negotiate this dense mud. At one point in this race, near the midpoint of the race, it appeared as though Turgat had made a break and was going to really separate himself from, in particular, Avuti and the rest of the field. But Avuti came back, he fought back, and now has the lead. And it appears to be strictly a two-man race for the gold medal, although Guerra is still in contention but he's a fair distance back. The two children are having great fun running against these championship athletes. They do have the advantage of a sizable inside curve, of course, but they will remember this experience, and this might inspire them to take up some serious running themselves. And I think the organizers have to be very encouraged by the large number of spectators that have turned out to watch proceedings under very difficult weather conditions. Guerra of Portugal looking strong, still in third place. If he were to finish third, he would be the first non-African since Tim Hutchins in Stavanger, Norway, 10 years ago to win a medal. That would be an outstanding performance for Guerra of Portugal, the first non-African to win a medal in the World Cross Country Championship in 10 years. It is still a booty. A 21-year-old with a slight edge on the four-time champion who is in his 30th year. You've got to be very careful that these lap runners don't inadvertently get in the way and bring one of them down. Fortunately, there is a fair bit of room to pass, but there's always that danger that the fatigue runner being lapped can move sideways suddenly and cause trouble. Ibuti now working very hard indeed. Turgat staying very close indeed. And as they complete this final lap, they have the finish line within sight. And this could be a sprint to the finish line. Finding firmer footing now. And Turgat is right on the shoulder of the younger Kenyan, Patrick Ibuti. Searching for drier ground. Slightly firmer footing as the mud clings to them and makes them work even harder than they would like to close to the end of 12,000 meter. Here comes Guerra, Portugal, looking strong, working hard through this morass, trying to negotiate his way past the lap runners, recognizing he's got an almost impossible task to try to get up into the silver or gold position, but hanging on desperately into his third place. A shower at the conclusion of this race will be most welcome relief. And some of the mud for those trailing will be a little difficult to remove. <laughs> now Turgat on terms. Turgat on terms with Ivuti, forcing him to push a little harder. This may be the breaking point. This may be the point in the race where Turgat has decided to push his younger rival, his younger teammate, and he appears to be making a successful break. Five meters, he wants to stretch this. He doesn't want any late surprises. He is stretching it. He's moving along magnificently towards his fifth consecutive championship. Great running by Ibuti too, and by Guerra, but there we are, Turgat well in control. And Turgat is sprinting to the finish line, and a bit of history has been achieved on this day in Belfast in the World Cross Country Championships. A fifth consecutive title for Paul Turgat of Kenya, Patrick Abudi finishing second, and look at the smile on the face of Guerrera. Guerrera finishing in third place, blowing kisses to the crowd as he accepts the applause for a third place bronze medal, ending the Kenyan and African domination as we see 671 Chalanga running in to be fourth. And then another Kenyan, Evans Ruto.
finishes in fifth place. So for team competition, as we see another Kenyan in sixth, you can't do much better than they have done. But what an effort by Paul Turgat to claim a fifth consecutive world championship, a four-second advantage over teammate Patrick Evuti. We'll be back to wrap up the World Cross Country Championships after this.